The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, A rich man had a steward who was reported to him for squandering his property. He summoned him and said, What is this I hear about you? Prepare a full account of your stewardship, because you can no longer be my steward. The steward said to him, What shall I do? Now that my master is taking the position of steward away from me, I am not strong enough to dig. And I am ashamed to beg. I know what I shall do, so that I am removed from the steward. So that when I am removed from the stewardship, they may welcome me into their homes. He called in his master's debtors one by one. To the first he said, "How much do you owe my master?" He replied, "One hundred measures of olive oil." He said to him, "Here is your promissory note." Sit down and quickly write one for fifty. Then to another, stu- the steward said, "And you, how much do you owe?" He replied, "One hundred cores of wheat." To the steward, the steward said to him, "Here is your promissory note. Write one for eighty." And the master commended that dishonored steward for acting prudently. For the children of this world are more prudent in dealing with their own generation. Then are the children of light. I tell you, make friends for your for yourselves with dishonest wealth, so when it fails you, you will be welcomed into the eternal dwellings. The person who is trustworthy in very small matters is also trustworthy in great ones, and the person who is dishonest in small very small matters is also dishonest in great ones. If therefore you are not trustworthy with dishonest wealth, Who will trust you with true wealth? If you are not trustworthy with what belongs to another, who will give you what is yours? No master can serve two masters. He will either hate one or love the other, or to be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and Mammon. The Gospel of the Lord. not that bad so well good morning here I am back when I was in seminary a dear nun friend of mine sister Mary Joan a sister of the Immaculate Heart of Mary of Philadelphia was very kind to me so one year myself and two seminarians were assigned on Thursdays to go down to St. Agnes Hospital in South Philly After our work there, she would invite us over frequently to the convent for dinner. And I noticed how happy the sisters were. They really were happy. So how happy the sisters were. So I said to her once, you know, you have such a happy convent. And she said, you know, I learned to be a good superior from all the rotten superiors I had to live with. Now, when you think about it, sometimes the bad example becomes a very good example, meaning don't become like this. Don't let this happen to you. In a way, that's what's going on in our gospel passage today. Here we have the steward who's been dishonest. He has been embezzling, and all of a sudden, he is caught. He has to give an accounting. So what does he do? Well, he wants to secure his position. So he says to the one... You have a hundred measures of olive oil. Now that's 800 gallons of olive oil and cut it in half. Then he says to another, you have a hundred cores of a wheat. That's 1,000 bushels of wheat. Cut it by 280, so 20% off. So imagine this. To save himself, he continues to embezzle, to steal from his master. He does so to secure his position in this world. And consider this, 
he can use it as blackmail. Like, if you don't take me in, I will tell my master you've cheated him too. This is what you really owe. Now, our Lord uses all of this to make a good point. He says, if the children of this world are more prudent, are so prudent in dealing with their own members, how about you who are children of the light? Now, our Lord says, make friends with, for yourselves with dishonest wealth. Now, that's a poor translation. He's talking about make friends with normal wealth. So the wealth, the blessings of this world. But in the sense of, don't let them become an idol. Don't let your possessions possess you. Don't let those blessings take control of your life. Keep your hearts set on greater things. Keep your eyes pointed to heaven. So our Lord's teaching us that we have to be good stewards of all that God has given to us. Everything we have is a gift from God to be used rightly. So therefore, consider our lives. We do put a lot of our time and talent into education, developing a career, learning new things. How much effort do we put into growing in a virtuous life? in wanting to become a better Christian, to become even a saint. And there are those that really will invest a lot of treasure. So like preparing for college education, having a comfortable home, thinking of a retirement savings. How much do we use of our treasure to continue the mission of the Lord, the church, to help the poor, to help good charities, so with that in mind, I'm here because today is Commitment Sunday. Since the beginning of our parish, this is the time when I have encouraged you to consider your time, talent, treasure in how you serve your parish. Considering your time, of course, the most important gift of time is what you're doing right now, taking time on Sunday to worship God, and then taking time to pray. If your parents... You take the time to educate your children in the faith and to create that Catholic home. Think, though, of your talents, though. How can you serve your parish? After all, none of this just happens. We need a lot of volunteers. I think of two ways in particular. We have our music ministry. The choir is started up again. You all know we have a beautiful music program. If you have a gift of music, why not join the choir? It's one rehearsal a week, and then we have Sunday. You're here for Sunday anyway. We also need ushers. Every year, I need more ushers because people move. Some people decide to stop ushering. I need ushers. Once a month, you're here anyway. Why not be an usher? Think of the organizations you could become involved in. Today at Pancakes, there will be the different organizations that will have their tables set up. A few to highlight, though. Knights of Columbus. Today, they provide the pancakes once a month. They're all volunteers. They also take care of our food drive every month. They do the parish picnic, the Christmas market. The Knights do so much for our parish. Also, the Ladies of Hope. They will begin their First Sunday of the month, Donut Days. They do the Marian Tea. So many good activities. We have our youth group for the teenagers. We need our teens to have good Catholic friends. This is a way to do this. Consider, though, by investing your time and talent in this way, you're going to become part of a parish. You're going to have friends, good friends, that are going to support you. In this world today, we need to have good Catholic friends and to know we're part of a parish. We aren't alone. But there's also the treasure aspect. So with that, I invite Scott Ward, who's one of our founding members and who is on our parish finance council, to just give you a review of last year's fiscal year and with that, the insert that you'll find in the bulletin this Sunday. Thank you, Father. 
As Father said, my name is Scott Ward, and I speak to you on behalf of the Our Lady of Hope Finance Committee. Generally, I train stay below the radar, but when Father asks, you say yes. And if you think about it twice, you're going to end up saying yes twice. <laughs> I'd like to provide some perspective on the committee, our role, and a bit of parish history. The Finance Committee is comprised of our parish priests and five parishioners with experience in finances, accounting, and auditing. Our role is primarily one of oversight and guidance regarding the finances of the parish. Our committee reviews, questions, and makes recommendations. We certify and attest the financial reports that are submitted to the Diocese of Arlington, and we also review the results of an annual independent audit that is conducted on parish finances. Please be assured that Our Lady of Hope is on very firm footing from a financial standpoint. Your contributions to our parish are being managed with care, discipline, and financial stewardship. We meet regularly with Father throughout the year to assess the parish's financial position, review the accounting for the sources of funds, operating expenses, capital needs and maintenance, as well as debt reduction. The most recent annual report had an income statement and balance sheet which required 10 pages to properly categorize and itemize. Today in the bulletin you will receive a summary report, the 2019 annual financial report to parishioners, which is a condensed version of that clean audit report. In the year 2000, with the leadership of Father Saunders, both the parish and the finance committee were formed. For five years, we met in the high school. At that time, we were evaluating mortgage financing options to build the approximately $19 million combined school and sanctuary construction project, which we have now enjoyed for so many years. Site work and construction began in 2003. The school opened in 2005, and the church was consecrated in January of 2006. Our Lady of Hope quickly grew, and many families and, families and many children have benefited from Father's original vision that the entire project be completed rapidly and under one contract. Our parish conducted an initial construction fundraising campaign, later, later a second building campaign, was able to further reduce our mortgage debt. Some families have grown and moved on, and some new families have joined. Together, we've confronted the uncertainty of 9-11, as well as the financial challenges of a lengthy recession. Over those 19 years, each of us may have also had personal challenges in one form or another, and we understand. For whatever length of time you've been a parishioner, you've also been able to enjoy the blessings of a vibrant church in which to worship. You've had the oppor opportunity to enroll students in our own Catholic school and religious education programs. We've all had the strength and continuity of our Catholic faith and one pastor to lead us throughout. In summary, I'm very pleased to report that with the continued generosity of so many committed families and parishioners, and with the continued stewardship of Father Saunders, that our original $19 million construction project now has remaining mortgage debt reduced to just $2.5 million. The Finance Committee projects that this debt will fully amortize and pay off in time for the 25th anniversary of Our Lady of Hope in 2025. This will be a great accomplishment for all of us, and a great celebration will be in order. So today on Commitment Sunday, we should each reflect for a moment on our financial giving toward our church and the parish that we call home. For new families, you may consider joining the effort with families that have previously pledged to help eliminate the construction debt. As with any home, we all know that the ongoing maintenance needs of a parish will continue, and as a parish, it would be best for us to strengthen our financial reserves. As we prepare for the future of Our Lady of Hope, our independent oversight finds that the parish is very well run and in solid financial health. May God continue to bless us all with abundance. Thank you, Father. So thank you, Scott. So again, at Pancakes, you can come down, look at the different organization and the representatives there to ask questions. Also, it's all listed in the bulletin in case you have any information. Now one day, or one, one way to be good stewards is to just take care of our little home here. So as your pastor, you, when 
you leave Mass, I would ask you, make sure you have all your used tissues, your diapers, your little pacifiers, baby bottles. Put the little hymnals back into the pew with the ribbons inside. That helps the ushers a lot. You won't believe what I find. So, so it, is, it is time for the treasure box. Haven't done this for a while. So, first of all, I have to see what's here. Oh, we have a rattle. So now, the problem with rattles, they rattle my brains. So, try preaching with a rattle. We do have a happy elephant with a pacifier, so if anyone wants to claim that, you may do that. But then we had an ongoing saga here, the Little Mermaid. So, the Little Mermaid was left in the pew, stranded. Oh, no. And so, the mean brontosaurus dinosaur saw the little mermaid and decided, I am going to eat you. Oh no, help me, help me, save me, please, somewhere. We need a cape crusader. Na 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 na, Batman! So Batman came to help the little mermaid and to get rid of mean brontosaurus. Now, the only problem with this is, makes noise. Also, Father Shear is lusting, coveting Batman. I told him he can't have him, but he can have Minnie Mouse. So Father Shear can have Minnie Mouse because Minnie Mouse is a very good Catholic. Minnie Mouse is soft and cuddly. She sits in the pew quietly. She makes no noise, very prayerful. So we like Minnie Mouse and all of her relatives. Now you adults are no different really. I found this purse, and it has like 20 different sticks of lipstick in it. And then, here is a woman's stocking. And here is a shoe. What do you all do in the pews? And besides the shoe, there's a heel. Now, I deal with soles. You know, I do soles, not heels, but anyway, here you have it. And then, someone brought a little can of Lysol, so I guess we have some germaphobes in our parish. And here is some earplugs. Now, now, I don't know why you have earplugs, and I don't want to venture to guess. And here's the best of all, last month somebody left a walker. All right, now. If you can walk and you've been healed, let me know. It's, you know it'll, it'll be you know, great for my resume. Be healed. And, you know, so, so anyway, this is all real. Now, so the point is, we take care of our church. Now, with that all in mind, I thank you for all of your support, your time, talent, treasure. But keep in mind that we are called to be the children of the light. We're in this world, but not of this world. And our parish is a great light in this community. May God bless you.